Well, there you go, guys. This is what we're going to be building in this video. I call this a chamber pot bowl. And the reason is because that's where I put all my leftover epoxy. Anytime I pour something, I always mix too much deliberately and I have a place to put it. So there you go. And then I make something of it. And this is a result of approximately eight months. I'm just sitting there and when I get done making whatever I'm making, I pour the excess in there and just leave it. No pressure pot, no nothing. It works out fine. No bubbles. It's just it's unbelievable. Anyway, that's what we're going to be doing. So let's uh, let's get on with it. See what this is? This is a uh, we go. I I call this a. This is my drip bowl. This is my chamber pot. <laughs> I put all my waste epoxy in this. It's an else. It's a two two and a half quarts. You know, about a half a gallon plus a half a quart. So I just you know when I pour too much or mix up too much, I pour the excess in here, and it has a bunch of pieces of walnut in it. Looks like I really got happy with the green, doesn't it? But anyway, it's got a bunch of chunks of walnut, so I think I'm going to make me a small pedestal bowl out of that. And uh, that's, that's the project we're going to get on to here very shortly. So I started putting a face plate on here, and I drilled some holes. And I, I put in these, uh, these screws like this right in here, and they're deck screws. And evidently, I didn't drill my holes deep enough, because uh, there you go. Where'd it go? There they are. See there? I popped three of them. So the, the other parts are still in there, but that ain't no big problem. So I'm going to put the, I'm gonna put the face plate back on with new holes and shorter screws. And I'll drill them the right length this time. And whenever I start turning the top, I'll just, I'll just cut in around them. I'll drill the center out, and I'll cut around them. They'll pop out. Well, as you can see, it's on here. Got a little off-center issue with it, but it's not really too bad. It's, uh, I don't know. Let me see. It's about a quarter inch. But that isn't too bad. Now, my, my thought initially, and of course everybody knows it, you know, most of the time it don't end up like you think it's going to going to, so just bear with me. I, anyway, my initial thought is I'm going to make a pedestal bowl out of this because I want to get a, a you know, I don't want to just line after line after color. I want them to have some sort of shape to them. Uh, and, you know, there's some, there's, there's also some wood in there and gumballs and, you know, ain't no telling what else is in there, so there's a walnut and, I don't know what that is. It looks like cherry. And you know, could be some other stuff. But we'll see. So I got it on here and I got the fast belt going. Uh, let me let me hold it up here. I haven't whirled it up there. I know it's out pretty good, but let me hold it up. It's so small that, you know, it's not really going to be much of an issue. Alright, let's see what we got here. I'm about to lock that down. I don't, think, I don't much believe it's going to go anywhere. It won't take long to get it in balance. My face shield on. I stand over here in the beginning anyway. And this is just going to be a typical round cutter. I'm not much of a traditional tool using guy, even though I can and I have. I learned on them, but 
what I found is I got better things to do than spend my time sharpening. When you get with epoxy, you will do a lot of sharpening. If you get to a rough spot and you a little past it, and right there we're at 2200. Let's see what happens. friends. Alright. No chip out. Got some places here, but that's not chip out. There's a, there's a sticky void in there for some reason. You gotta get past that, that's for sure. But if we're getting there, be a little bit, but we'll get there. Because you gotta take this stuff slow. If you try to push it, you're gonna get that chip out. Secret to not chip out using a non-negative rake, which is what this is, is speed and angle of the dangle. You gotta hold it in there at about 30 to 45 degrees. And you gotta have a decent speed out of it. My opinion for what it's worth. So that was sort of sticky, so that means I didn't have a good mix on that epoxy. That's what it means. So we got to go in past it for sure. Because uh, none of this appears like it's bonded, I guess is the right word. So that's, you know, gotta, that'd be a good place to put the uh, end in for the pedestal. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with and try to get this down narrower right here leave this alone for the time being, but I have some nice figure under there. I see a gumball right here, here, here. I have no idea there's one under there, so I gotta, I gotta get down to those because you want them to show. But, uh, for now, I'm just gonna come up here, sort of make this narrow here, and then, then I'll do the pedestal. About 2,900 right there. I 
told you how hot that was coming off there, you wouldn't believe me. And what I'm using here is WD-40. It's another fine use for it, you know. It's all that gummy stuff off. Now I'm going to go in the other room and use soap and water on it. That's what messes up face shield splatters. You get splatters, that's what does it. Quicker than anything. Now if this hadn't been CA glue, you can just you can just forget it. It's there. So I'll catch you in a minute, okay? Well yeah, we just about ready to hit it again. Uh got it all cleaned off now. Shiny like a brand new one. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I sure get tired of these people, these know-it-alls, telling you how to do things other than me. <laughs> I hear so many times, say, don't use a paper towel, don't use a paper towel. Well, I'll, I'll put a, something on there, don't use a dry paper towel. But I've always used a paper towel. There it is. Shiny's a new dog. Now let's take a look at this thing. All right, what do we got here? All right, we still got some of this gooey crap in We're running around here. See that right there? Hope it don't run too much further. Got to get it out of there. I turned down a little bit more on the top here. This part of the gumball. Still want to get down some more so I can get some more of that you know, different stuff out of there. And of course, I want this to go a whole lot deeper than this. Also, how I get such a nice clean cut. I'm going to try to do a little bit of sand in here. I'm going to use power sander first. I like to use these butterfly sanders. Uh, I do have to turn on the dust collector, guys.
Now, I've had people say, ask me about, do you really think it does any good to put cedar on epoxy? And my answer is yes and no. The epoxy itself is all right, but you, you have, uh, you know, like in certain places you've got little voids that you can't, you can't really get out, and the cedar will fill those. Plus, uh, this this particular one's got a lot of wood in it, and all that wood definitely needs sealing. So this seals it. And it, you know, it, it helps with the shine and all that kind of good stuff. So you know, that's the reason I do it. And I do it my usual way. Been doing this way for years. I lay it on thick and let it set a minute and then I sort of rub it in with a paper towel. And then after the first coat, I'll have to hit it with like uh, 400 or steel wool or something because it will raise the grain on the wood. I don't think it raises the grain on the epoxy, but it does on the wood. <laughs> The epoxy has grain. So anyway, that's uh, that's the way I do it. I put it on like that. All right, I've got four coats of cedar on it now. With you know sanded and steel walled in between now. This is the last one. And you know, I've done nothing to this one so far. So you can see the shine I've got. And you know, that's just, uh, when we look at that, they'll tell you it might be a crack. But I don't think it's a crack, it's something in it. I don't even know what I'm saying now, guys. Anyway, you see the shine I've got already. So, you know. We're going to even make it better. Going to put uh, two coats of uh, Verifane water based poly on it. And then we're going to do this again, and then we're going to hit it with axe paste. This is four rot steel wool. All right, this looks pretty smooth, but I'm still going to hit it with a little bit of 400, uh, 4 out rather, sorry. This, my friends, is... Axe abrasive sanding paste. And I like it. I'm running slow for a while. You can hear it sanding for lack of a better word. I don't know what this is equivalent to. I've heard different things. I have no idea. I'm turning the pedal to North PM. In case anybody was wondering, I'm going to do what I don't advise you to do. I'm going to use a micro towel. And notice I hold it like this. In case you grab it, it'll pull it out. No finger wrap. 
got enough problem with fingers already. And I don't use it much because it's just so... It, it does leave a little residue and I like to do it all. in it fellas and it feels nice too yeah, I don't know what that is but it's pretty looks like a <laughs> oh, well you can see that you can see it pretty good because guy got, got two eyes and a red tongue and a mouth but that's neat All right, now we're going to take the axe polish, which consists of a lot of canuba. See my way. Red, get out of there. Get out of there. He's trying to go through a window. Guess I'm going to put him back out in the pen. I don't like keeping a dog in a pen. Sometimes you just got to. And obviously it's hot to trot. I think I'm gonna do that here. Just in a sec. But like always, I start off slow. <clears throat> Try to get a good, good smear. You need to get this pretty warm. that this ain't gonna happen. It's so smooth. Mm -hmm. All right, it's been quite a while since I've been messing with this, but I came out this morning, I finally got those uh, busted pieces out. It was just a hodgepodge, so I didn't bother videoing it. But now I'm going to go ahead and finish the inside of the bowl.
Okay, well, I've got all the sanding done. Now I'm getting ready to put some sealer on the inside. Hopefully I don't get nothing on the outside so I don't have to redo it again. Alright, I just got done using Axe Paste. I almost forgot to turn the camera on. I guess better late than never. Here's what I just used on it right here. That's after sanding it down to 400 and uh, 4 odd steel wool. So right now I'm using this. And once I've polished it here, take it off and fix my logo in and we'll be done. There you go. Even the bottom is pretty shiny. Isn't that beautiful? That's my favorite spot right there, see? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Can you see it? There you go. He's got a face, you know, where they even got a tongue there and two eyes. All right, now see you when I get the bottom done. Well, hey guys, I'm finished with this now. This, uh, I have to say that I am very pleasantly surprised with this bow. I mean, it's, I think it's absolutely beautiful, the colors and, and all the stuff in it right there. And my little, my little guy with his face right there, I'll bring it up and give you a good look here in a second. Uh, but you know, this is probably, I don't know, six, eight months worth of, uh, Let's call it over mixing, which I do deliberately. Anytime I have a project, I always mix more than I need because it's better to have too much than not enough. But uh, I mean, it turned out great. I don't know what else to say. And it's got like maybe three different kinds of epoxy in it. It has one flaw right here, and evidently I got some epoxy in there. Did not have a good mix because it's just a little soft right there. Now, any good epoxy guy will know this thing. It will always, uh, it will harden in time. It may take six months or so, but it will harden. And of course, I did, I did my, I did my old logo in the bottom right here. Uh, the laser does not work well on epoxy, surprisingly. So here's a little closer look. I can get up here where I can see it a little better. There you go. Another one down. I believe this is 257. So don't be afraid to mix too much. Just have a plan for it. None of it goes to waste. So, you know, you guys, if you like what I do, you know, tell your friends and subscribe to yourself, and I will catch you later. Take care and call your mama.